Greetings everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Creepy Fox Scary Stories Podcast. Today, we'll be taking a listen to some of these scary Halloween stories that subscribers such as yourselves have shared with me over these past four years. These stories have all been digitally remastered and re-recorded for your listening experience. Now, if this is the first time you're joining us on the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, as you'll find scary stories on my channel that you haven't heard from any other narrators. How cool is that? So, as you settle in, don't forget to also grab yourself some snacks, sit back, relax, and let's dive into these true and scary Halloween stories. Enjoy. Halloween. It should be a time for trick-or-treating, dressing up as your favorite superhero, and going out to parties. While that perfectly describes 95% of people's experiences, at least I would like to think so, my adventure on Halloween was a bit different. Different in the fact that I was almost taken out. And I don't mean taken out on a date. But let's go back to the early 2000s. I was in high school, and my friend Kevin and I had been bored one Halloween afternoon. Most of our friends were going out to the parties that they had been invited to, but we were the kids who preferred being away from such nonsense, at least nonsense in our eyes. Therefore we had come up with the idea of checking out this abandoned mansion that had been left empty since the 1990s. It was a bit out of the way from our small Pennsylvanian town, but we thought what a better way to spend Halloween. After all, it had been quite popular with urban explorers, and it was said to be haunted too. Though this experience has nothing to do with the paranormal, it still gave us the chills. Later that evening, we make the 30-minute bicycle ride over. Before approaching, we started to get a really bad feeling. While we rode in the woods, we saw a bunch of creepy graffiti on rocks and cult-like symbols carved into the trees. Bear in mind, this isn't a part of the countryside that was well known for criminal activity. I know looking back this was a terrible idea, but being naive teenagers, we thought that we were unstoppable. We arrive and just like we expected, the place looked empty. Now I'll just go ahead and quickly describe the building for y'all. It was two stories, around 10 rooms in total. The front yard was overgrown with a bunch of trash and debris everywhere. Vines and foliage were taking over the walls and windows. On the front porch, there were a bunch of do not trespass signs and private property. We ignored these signs and so we entered anyway, calling out to any potential inhabitants. Hello? Is anyone here? We called out, only to be met with silence. It's now we begin to make our way into the rooms. First room we enter looks to be like one of a child. There was an abandoned crib and some creepy looking dolls. On the walls was wallpaper that featured clowns and various other carnival animals, such as lions and elephants too. We then move on to the kitchen, except something about this kitchen spelt all bad. There was even more graffiti, with a bunch of used needles lying everywhere. We had to make sure to be careful with our steps, as they looked used. And on top of that, there were about 10 kitchen knives stuck on the wall. I remember my friend opening a drawer and even finding a bunch of bugs. It was creepy. From here, we continue on to make our way room after room and finding various debris and more creepy graffiti and symbols. However, one room on the second floor was where our creepy night would become worse. As we are walking down the hallway, we happen to look out the upstairs window, just in time to see the sunset. Well, on top of the sunset, we ended up seeing what looked like an early 1990s Plymouth Voyager making its way to the mansion with a purpose. We now watch as two men in typical street clothing exit the car, and with rifles. I would describe them as pretty young, no older than 30 years old. One had a bald head and a beard, the other had a long hair and a light stubble. This sent chills down our spine. Why would they need to be armed? Both my friend and I look at each other as... One of them then fires at a mailbox. We now jump to cover as another shot is heard breaking one of the glass windows a mere few feet away from our face. 
our number one priority at this point was not to get spotted. The chase to get out begins, but with there only being one staircase, we had to go back the way we came from. Thus, we army crawl our way to the stairs as we feared we would have been spotted from the windows. Once we were at the staircase, we could hear the two from outside talking and laughing with random shots in between. We now paid more attention and we now noticed the footsteps are coming closer. Going downstairs was a no-go. We had to hide. But where? Time was of the essence and time was running out. We chose to go into what appeared to be the main bedroom of this house. Locking the door was out of the question, seeing as it was missing. Thus we chose to hide in a closet. Good thing we did, because moments later we can hear the two enter the room. As my friend and I are watching, both of them take out some soda cans from their backpack and then place them on the window. They then back up and started to shoot. It was now obvious that perhaps these two weren't looking for both my friend and I, but were just instead doing some target practice. However, out of all times, my allergies came up and the dust in the closet causes me to sneeze. The two immediately stop laughing and firing their weapons then point their rifles to the closet. Oh great, I just caused our early demise. I remember thinking in my head, who's in there? Come out right now, or we're going to start shooting. What other choice did we have? We slowly opened the closet door and made our way out with our hands up. You two do know this is private property, right? We apologize profusely and are on the verge of tears. What do you think we should do? I don't think anyone would notice they're missing if we take them out back, one of them more or less says. I then remember them whisper before the bald one tells us to sit down with her backs turned. This was it. The end. Moments later, I feel the barrel touch my back, but then it backs away. Then we hear two loud bangs, except instead of firing at me, they fire at a window, causing it to shatter. It's now they tell us that we can look and both are laughing. Oh, come on you two, did you really think that we were that evil? We're not gonna kill you. They then start laughing. Well, one thing was for sure, we weren't laughing. My friend now had a panic attack and I was almost basically crying like a baby. They apologized saying that we were more than welcome to join them, but instead we just chose to leave. Wise choice. We exit the mansion, get on our bicycles, and get out of there without looking back. So, anyway, that was the evening that my friend and I almost met our doom to some random college kids with their version of fun. Please tell me that I'm not the only one who listens to the creepy fox narrate stories when they're trying to sleep or relax. Am I crazy? I hope not. Anyway, the reason I'm writing this in is because I'm hoping to make it onto this year's Halloween Stories episode as I have a pretty scary experience that happened to me on, you guessed it, Halloween. I still don't know to this day why this had to happen to me, but unfortunately in this world there are a lot of people who are up to no good. Such a shame considering people are just trying to live their normal lives. So for reference, this occurred in 2007, and I'm female by the way. I was 22 years old and I was attending university in Southern California at Cal State Fullerton. Just your typical shy college girl. I never really went out with my roommates as I lived in a dorm on campus, but whenever I did it was actually pretty fun, all things considered. Such was Halloween evening. I just returned from class and I just stepped out of the shower. That's when my roommate Jamie came up to me and asked if I would like to join her for trick or treating. Her little brother was going to be getting dropped off by their mother and Jamie was going to take her little brother Alex to get candies. I almost actually said no as I had quite a bit of studying to do, but as I was feeling pretty burnt out on that, I decided sure, why not, it would be fun. I am so happy I went because as you'll find out soon, I was able to ensure our safety. 
Now, where we were going was just across the street from campus. There is a church called the Seekers Chapel that hosts this really fun Halloween festival where they feature something called Trunk or Treat. Yes, you heard that right. You can look it up yourself on Google. Just thought I would bring that up since this is an edit to my story that I wanted the creepy fox to add for clarification since he told me he was going to include my story again for his Halloween compilation. The last time he covered my experience, somebody in the comments section said that my story was fake since I mentioned a church and a trunk or treat Halloween event, but then that commenter went silent when they found out that there are churches that hold trunk or treats. Sorry, just it got me a bit mad because they basically made it sound like what I went through was just made up, but it wasn't. It was very traumatic. Anyway, continuing on with my story. So basically, there's this huge amount of land where people will come by, park their cars, and then pass out candies next to said vehicles. It's actually a pretty cool concept as it was accompanied by a bunch of games, music, food stands, and even little rides. It reminded me of the carnivals I would go to as a little girl with my brothers and sisters. At any rate, we arrived around 7 p.m. and this was when for the first time I was finally able to meet Jamie's mom. She was very nice and so was her little brother Alex. He reminded me of my little brother. After a brief talk, Jamie's mom says she'll come by to pick up Alex in a couple of hours as she was going to take the opportunity to do some grocery shopping as well as getting food for the pets. Sounded like a plan. Jamie's mom leaves, and we proceed to spend the next couple of hours trick-or-treating, eating food, and watching Alex as he played games with all the kids. So far, everything has been pretty innocent, and you would think, cool, doesn't really seem like anything scary or downright frightening is going to happen. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. I'm leading up to it. Jamie's mom arrives a little bit earlier, around 8.30 p.m., and by that point, Alex is pretty exhausted. I was too. After all, I had awoken pretty early that morning, and I wanted to now go get some rest, as I remember I had to wake up early the next day. So we bid Alex and Jamie's mom a farewell, and after going to get ourselves a little hot chocolate from one of the food stands, we now begin to make our way back toward campus. What a night. Thanks for inviting me, Jamie. I told my friend with a smile as we pass by a large group of trick-or-treaters that are crossing the street, dressed up in an assortment of different costumes. Yeah, sure is. Thanks for joining me. Once we're on campus grounds, we have to walk down this sort of long walkway that's very deserted just to get to our dorms. To the left of this long walkway is a large arboretum where I will sometimes go to study during the daytime. At least, that's what I used to do back then. To the right is the university's baseball field, where, yeah, the baseball team plays. No kidding. Anyway, did I mention how lonely it was here? Doesn't help that there are only a few light posts with aging light bulbs that barely light the place up. As we're about halfway down this two minute walk of a walkway, we noticed a figure that was just sort of sitting up ahead of us at the side. They appear to be looking through a backpack. Could it have been a student trying to scare people on Halloween? It was a possibility, but something just didn't seem right as we laughed nervously amongst ourselves. That's why I took the opportunity to now take the pepper spray out from my purse and hold it tightly in my grasp. In these moments, the figure suddenly starts to walk toward us, and now we get a surprise of a lifetime. Hand over your purses and your phones. We sort of stood there in shock as we now get more details on this individual. He was definitely a lot older than a college student. He looked to be in his early to mid 40s. I could see a large amount of acne on his face. He was also very skinny and acting very erratically with his movements. He kind of reminded me of someone who might have been on drugs or under the influence of some sort of substance. Definitely gave me the smell of skunk. In any case, we told the guy that that wasn't going to happen and we start to walk past him. What he does next, however, has time slowing down to a halt. He reaches into his pocket 
and just a few seconds later, he flicks open a knife, and I remember him saying, I'm not going to ask you to again, hand over what you have, or you're both dead. His tone of voice said it all. This was no sort of Halloween prank whatsoever. It's now we begin to book it past him, knowing that the on-campus police were just a short walk from the dormitories. How this guy didn't know that? I'm not too sure. Either way, I'm holding on to my pepper spray, telling him as we're both gasping for air that if he doesn't stop following us, I would now pepper spray him. But he doesn't seem to care. He's still chasing us, and we're just thinking to ourselves, this is how it ends. We get stabbed and killed on Halloween. By some sort of miracle of God, it just so happens that we see an on-campus police officer cruising up ahead of us. We ended up getting his attention, and instantly the police officer comes out with his sidearm drawn. The man who had been chasing us suddenly stops in place, and thank the Lord he does the right thing by dropping the knife and then surrendering almost instantly. We are so glad that we didn't have to see somebody get blasted by bullets, because that would have been something else to see. As you'd expect, we were so scared. Even when the backup arrived, we couldn't stop shaking and crying until maybe an hour later after that event. We did see the ensuing arrest, and after our statements were taken, we went back to the dormitories, but not before I texted all my friends and family to tell them about the scary incident. In case you're wondering, we later found out that the man was a well-known druggie in the area who happened to be shooting up that same night, for whatever reason, there on campus. Still don't know why he became so agitated and ran at us with a knife, but at least he had the common sense not to get himself wasted, like in GTA. Anyway, thank you again ahead of time if you do feature this on your channel, Creepy Fox. Much love to you, and for what you do. Please stay safe, and get better with that leg of yours, so my friends and I can come visit you at Disneyland. Sorry it took so long, but I was thinking of a good story to send to you, and well, here it is. This story took place when I was 8 years old, so about 16 years ago, and of all nights, on Halloween. For some context, my mom and dad were separated when I was 3 years old, and this year my brother and I were to spend Halloween with our dad. He always made us laugh and forget about the usual stress at home, but I digress. So, as many 8 year old boys do, I dressed up as Spider-Man as he was and still is one of my favorite superheroes. My brother was about 12 years old at the time, and he felt he had already outgrown Halloween, so therefore that night he just went with my dad and I to hang out more than anything. After getting to my dad's house, I ran in already in costume, and then I took a huge leap on his bed, landing in typical Spider-Man pose. Well hey Spider-Man, have you seen my son? He was supposed to be coming over today. My dad says, humoring me as he always did. I then remove the mask to reveal myself, to which he says, Oh, there you are. Did you just see Spider-Man? I love my dad as he always made me feel so much better about myself and my love for comic books. Since both my brothers were more sport-orientated, I always felt like the oddball of us boys, me being the nerdy one. But my dad always made me feel better about being different. Anyway... The night slowly approaches, and we decide to take to the sidewalks and start my candy hunt. After about an hour or two, I had a huge bag of candy and even more energy now. I always liked walking late at night with my dad. It was never anything short of entertaining. So taking note of my bag getting full, my dad suggests just going for a night walk and mentions a parking garage nearby where we could see the lights of our town. I was absolutely shocked. A parking garage was a great place to do my 8 year old Spider-Man acrobatics. With this plan in motion, we head toward the parking garage. However, as we get closer, a man in the distance seems to be following us, but from a longer distance. I didn't really notice it at first, but my brother had whispered to my dad mentioning how it seems the man was following us. Dad reassures us that he's probably just coincidentally heading in the same direction, not to worry about him too much. 
but like I said, I was distracted doing my spidey stuff. Finally, we get to the parking garage, and now we make our way to the top. However, I decided to take the stairs to the top instead of the elevator so I could continue to do more superhero stuff. My dad laughs and says, Okay, Spider-Man, but your brother is going with you, and I'll race you to the top. My brother sighs and reluctantly follows me up the stairs while my dad takes the elevator. I continue to shoot my pretend webs and make my way up the stairs. And this is when I notice a flash of some sort. Weird, I thought, but probably just a car or something. No big deal. However, as we near the top, I notice two more flashes. I slowly look behind us and I notice what appeared to be the man from earlier and this time he was holding a camera and taking pictures of me. I froze in place. Come on, dad's gonna beat us to the top. You're an awful superhero. My brother calls from further up the stairs. He then notices how still I got and makes his way back down to me. What's wrong? My brother asks. I slowly point to where the man had been taking pictures of me. My brother looks toward where the man is, to which the man now jumps behind a nearby tree. He took pictures of me, like more than one, I tell my brother as I'm clearly shaking. Let's get up to go get dad, my brother says as he begins running up the stairs. I waste no time flying up the stairs, even passing my brother on the way up. Hey Spider-Man, what took you so long to get up here? Out saving the city again? My dad playfully asks. Dad? That man from earlier? He was downstairs and he was taking pictures of me. I cry out to my dad, fighting back tears. About this time, we hear footsteps coming up the stairs, and of course it's the creep from earlier. I guess he thought our dad wasn't close by, seeing as how he wasn't on the stairs with me when the man was taking pictures. I see the look of my dad's face go from playful to one of pure anger as he enters protective mode. What are you doing up here, and why do you have that camera? My dad yells at this guy. The guy stammered for a while and finally says, Oh, I like your kid's costume. I just wanted to show it to my son. Yeah, right, creep. First of all, this costume wasn't that great. And secondly, why did you hide when my brother and I noticed you? My dad turns to my brother and says, Take your little brother into the elevator and go back downstairs. I'll meet you there. As my brother takes me by the arm into the elevator, this guy begins charging at my dad to which my dad now tackles the man to the ground and begins swinging at the guy, like no tomorrow. Just then, the elevator doors close, and my brother and I spend the way down trying to catch our breath from the adrenaline rush. We finally reach the bottom and take cover behind some concrete, and we wait for our dad to arrive. After what seemed like an eternity, we finally hear the elevator doors open, and my dad steps out, knuckles red, and blood on his shirt. My brother and I slowly come out of cover as dad turns and notices us approaching him. Hey Spider-Man, have you seen my son? My dad says as a smile spreads across his face. I now run up to my dad as I wrap my arms around him and I say, Dad, can we go home now? I ask still fighting tears. You got it Spider-Man, my dad says with a chuckle, wrapping his arms around me. No question. Dad clearly had pummeled this guy to teach him a lesson. He also took the camera and broke it later on after we got home. So luckily those photos he took won't end up in some creep's hands. My dad has unfortunately passed away since this story took place. But every time I think of him, I always remember that he was the real superhero that night. And how having children myself, I hope to always be the hero that they need. But that's my Halloween creepier experience. I hope you enjoyed listening. Take care. This happened roughly seven years ago, a few days before Halloween. For context, I'm female. I was going to a Halloween store after I got off of work to pick up some extra chocolates and candies for the trick-or-treaters that would be showing up to my home. Little did I know this little chore was going to turn into a complete nightmare. So I pulled up into the shopping center the Halloween store is located in and I parked all the way at the very back, 
close to where the exit to the main intersection is. I guess I wasn't the only one doing last minute Halloween shopping, which explained all the busy parking spots. Anyway, I enter the Halloween store and the first thing I'm able to see is what a complete show the employees had let the place become. There were kids running around screaming as the parents shopped and you could see various costumes, some taken out of their packaging, but lying on the floor like a teenage girl's messy room. Now, although it was this close to Halloween, I was surprised by how much was still available, albeit not exactly in the best of conditions. Now, I want to bring up this little detail because it might not seem too important at first, but as I started to make my way toward the aisles, considering I was in this medium-sized lobby area, I had just heard a man ask an employee where the restrooms were located at. Judging by his dirty stained clothing, his messy dreadlock hair, and ripped up shoes, which were more like sandals, I was able to make the assumption the man was homeless, which I would later confirm. Not that this was an issue, just a detail I wanted to go ahead and mention toward his description. Anyway, he ended up looking at me for a brief moment, with this really weird creepy smile that read, I'm going to grab you, before he ended up disappearing behind a rack of clown masks, presumably to go and find the restroom. Have I mentioned how much I'm afraid of clowns? Needless to say, apart from that awkward look, I made my way down an aisle of kids costumes, and at the very end I get stopped by an employee. Hi there miss, can I help you with something? He asked me with a friendly smile and a wave. He definitely was a lot more customer service educated than some of his fellow peers, who never even bothered to say hello when I entered the store. Sorry, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I told him that I was looking for some candy, and he told me to follow him as he leads me toward the back. I thanked him once we were there, and he soon returned to whatever it was he was doing. Now, unlike the front of the store, which looked like a mix of a birthday party and Disneyland, the back was almost deserted. There were a couple of older adults picking out bags of candy, but they left within moments of my arrival. Whatever, I thought. Now, what to get? I began asking myself. I saw Tootsie Pops, Twix, Gummy Worms, you name it. This was when I spent the next minute or two comparing prices and even texting my boyfriend to ask him what sorts of treats he thinks the kids in the block would like. This was one of my first mistakes, focusing on my phone and not on my surroundings. As I eagerly awaited the three little dots on the iMessage, indicating somebody is texting you back, I ended up hearing something fall over. I looked up in shock, believing a kid had dropped something, and what I see instantly gave me the chills. That man... Who I described earlier, the one who had gone to the restroom, was looking at me through the aisle of candy. He had this look across his face that said, oh man, my cover is blown. I think he was trying to move the candy, that way he could get a better look at me without me noticing, but I caught him red-handed. Seconds later, he turns around and disappears. This was when I started to get a really bad feeling in my gut. Something in me, I'm still not sure what it is to this day was telling me that I needed to get out of here, and fast. I ignored the candy and started to now briskly walk back the way I'd come from. But then, all of a sudden, it's the same man, and he's blocking my exit. Again, he has this really creepy smile on his face. Hey, where are you going? You got a second to talk? I told him no as I stepped to his left, looking to walk past him and out of the store. But he once again blocks my way. Where are you going, princess? Don't you want to spend a little time together? I promise it won't take too long. Here's when I got the strong whiff of alcohol, and my adrenaline now begins to pump. Back off, man. I'm warning you. I reply back, as I begin backing up and reaching for the pepper spray that's in my purse. The man stands there, confused to my reaction, still not sure what he was actually expecting. And then he too reaches for something, albeit in his pocket. I'm now at the back of the candy aisle, about to run toward another section of the store, and I watch in absolute shock as the man, no joke, pulls out the switchblade. He then runs at me, telling me to stay still. 
Maybe in his twisted fantasy he believed I would do such a thing, but I was part of no such fantasy. I now immediately started screaming at the top of my lungs as I now run over to a couple of college students who were picking out some decorations. Without any warning, I jumped behind the taller of the two with my pepper spray still in hand, and then I saw the guy chasing me come to a stop. Being caught red-handed, he quickly unflips the knife, but then puts it back into his pocket. Here's when I told the two that the man had run at me with the blade, and bless these dudes' hearts, they actually chase after the creep and manage to tackle him to the floor like a couple of football players who I found out was the manager of the store and a couple of the other customers come over to help me and what I see lying on the floor further up ahead of me proves that I was not imagining things. The switchblade the man had brandished was actually real, just like I expected. Anyway, the cops did show up and I and many of the customers got questioned and gave our statements. They did arrest them. But that didn't mean I spent the next few weeks looking behind me at all hours and acting paranoid, even in my own home. Fast forward to 2020, Halloween is just around the corner, and as of yet, I have not experienced anything as chilling and as frightening as the creep from the Halloween store. I remember this creepy experience taking place around 2005 when I ended up going trick-or-treating. Now, to give you a little bit of context, I'm female and was a freshman in high school. I was dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood. On this Halloween, I ended up going with my mom and heading to a Halloween party that her boss was holding. It was cool because there were a whole bunch of other kids, so I didn't feel too alone myself. We played a bunch of video games, and we ran around the backyard playing tag and hide and go seek. Eventually, I started to get bored, and I told my mom I wanted to go trick or treating in the surrounding neighborhood. My mom's boss lived in one of those high end private housing communities, so my mom wasn't too worried with me being out on my own. Just don't be out too late. I expect you to be back here in an hour, she told me. With that, I grabbed a pillowcase my mom's boss lent me, and I started to go house to house. After about 40 minutes of trick-or-treating, I got bored of visiting the same homes. Thus, I decided to exit this private little community and go across the street instead. You see, as we were driving over here, we saw this really cool haunted house that had a whole bunch of cars and trick-or-treaters. I knew I was cutting it close with time, but I thought I would be in and out in just about 10 minutes. I did get through the house fairly quickly, albeit with a lot of scares. And once I was outside, I started to now text my mom. It's while doing this at the end of the street, I started to hear footsteps behind me. I turned around, and it was a large man in a clown costume. It was creepy, but again, it's Halloween, so it's all good fun. Hey. How would you like to come with me? I've got a whole lot of candy in my van. I'm passing it out to the kids. Want some? I knew not to trust a stranger, so I tell him that I was not interested. This now upsets him, and he replies with an angry tone. That's an order. You're going to come with me whether you like it or not. He then grabs my arm and begins pulling me toward a nearby alleyway. Let me just say that this guy was super strong and I struggled to get away from him. I remember him taking out a knife at this point from his pocket and saying that if I kept moving, that he was going to slit my throat. I thought this was going to be it for me. I mean, out of all nights, nobody was near me at this moment. But then, a couple of police officers conveniently started to drive down the alleyway, driving in our direction. Seeing this vehicle, the clown lets go of me and then jumps into somebody's backyard. I was pretty much crying at this point as I waved down the police officers, as I now explained what had just happened. The officers ended up going and searching for the creep, and thank God they found him hiding in an old shed. When all was said and done, another couple of police officers returned me back to the Halloween party, and my mom immediately thought that I had gotten into trouble. If only she knew.
Every year around Halloween, I think of the same incident that occurred to my friend and I when we were in our last year of high school that made us seniors. This was in 1998, and I can still recall it like it was just yesterday. This takes place on Halloween night. I was going to hang out with my best friend Justin, but before I left my home, my dad asked if I could take my little brother trick-or-treating. I asked my father why he just couldn't take him, since he had done so all the previous years, but he explains that his boss had called him and said that he needed my dad at work very early, like at about 4am. I sighed at this chore and called Justin telling him that I might have to cancel our plans. Justin told me he'd keep me company, and so together with my little brother, we spent the next two hours trick-or-treating and walking around the neighborhoods on the other side of town. Fast forward to about 9.30pm, we're back at my house and we're dropping off my little brother. Hey, I'm hungry. Want to go get some McDonald's? I'll buy, Justin said. I agreed and told my mom about it, who was still awake at this point, and basically we said that we would be back in less than an hour. She said that it was fine as long as I didn't stay out past 11pm. Plenty of time to grab food and chill. The McDonald's we chose to go to was near my friend at Justin's house, about a 10 minute drive from my home. Now thinking the place would be packed, we planned on just picking up the food through the drive through and sitting in Justin's car, listening to the appropriately themed Halloween music that was then playing on the radio. However, when we reach the street light and intersection that's next to the McDonald's, we are surprised to learn that as we're waiting at the red light, it's pretty deserted. I could only see one other person through the large glass windows as they're eating inside the restaurant, which convinced Justin and I, let's just stay and eat inside. Now here's when things were about to take a turn for the downright terrifying. Fast forward after we had ordered our meals of chicken nuggets and french fries, we're just chilling at one of the tables, talking and admiring how empty the restaurant is, when I got distracted by someone pacing back and forth in the parking lot, Justin was sitting in front of me, so he didn't know what I had just seen. What is it? Justin asked. I have him turn around, and I point toward what looks to be like a man wearing a brown paper bag covering his face and also wearing a hoodie. There were holes for eyes and even a mouth. I remember we laughed, thinking that how silly of a costume this man was wearing, and then we focused our attention back to eating and telling other silly jokes. Before we left, however, Justin did have to use the restroom. Therefore, I waited for him near the front door, looking up toward the TV that was inside the lobby. About 20 seconds later, I heard a door opening. Thinking it's Justin, I move my attention away from the television and toward the restrooms, which are near the entrance. Don't move, kid, if you know what's good for you. The man who had the paper bag over his head is now inside the McDonald's saying, as he's got this large knife. As you'd expect, my first reaction was to laugh, but when he barked back at me with that deep and creepy voice, I immediately went silent. You two, start emptying the cash registers and put whatever is in there into this bag. The cashiers do as he says, as I'm standing there too afraid to move. I guess I was just concerned that if my friend walked out of the restroom, he might scare this robber and things could end badly. Time now seemed to have gone into slow motion, but I would snap out of it when I look at the front door, and I still think that somebody was looking out for me that night because there were two police officers just entering the establishment. Those police officers, who I guess hadn't seen what was taking place from outside the restaurant, as they had parked in the back and were unaware of our troubles, immediately changed their demeanors from laughter to seriousness and took out their guns. They now tell the man not to reach for the knife, who thanked the heavens above, he had momentarily placed the knife on the countertop to grab the bags of cash. Expecting to be part of a shootout, I'm so shocked by how quickly the man with the disguise drops the knife to the floor and then kicks it over to these police officers. Justin exits the restroom, now joins me just seconds after the police officers are handcuffing the man. 
Now to say we were scared is beyond anything that I can really define. That was truly a moment in my life where I could tell you, yep, nothing can really top it, and nothing has topped it since. Halloween Break-In From the title of my story, you can probably already get a general idea that this takes place on Halloween. Well, I guess in a way that is a lie. I mean, it does start on Halloween night, but it carries over into the following morning, November 1st. Here's exactly what went down. I want to take you back to when I was roughly 10 years old. We're talking about 2002. It was Halloween, and I along with my older sister, who was 17, went trick-or-treating in this really nice neighborhood about 20 minutes from my home. The reason we went there is because the homes there are well known for giving out full-size chocolate bars and expensive candies. And let me tell you, they didn't disappoint, as we sure got a handful. Other than that, I do remember it freezing. I was dressed up as Alice from Alice in Wonderland, by the way. Anyway, my sister is taking me to all these homes and we're having ourselves a good time. Before getting back to our car, however, the man in a ghost face outfit approaches my sister and I, and he says, Aw, how cute. Can I get a picture with you? Honestly, it didn't sound like too big of a deal, so I said, sure. After all, he was with another person dressed up as Michael Myers, and I really loved scary movies, even as a kid. That's why I actually sort of got excited. How I wish, however, I wasn't so friendly. After the picture, they wanted to know if my sister had a boyfriend, and if she wanted to hang out with them sometime in the future. My sister responded by saying that she already was seeing someone, and this caused the two to get mad. Let's just say that things went from innocent to creepy really fast, with the next things they said to her. We excused ourselves, thinking that they were just some edgy teenagers trying to get underneath my sister's skin. As we started to drive away, however, we did notice this silver Corolla that kept up with both my sister and I. My sister, thinking that we were being followed, made a whole bunch of turns down various streets. They followed each and every time. Eventually, however, we lose sight of them, and so we head home. This, however, isn't the end of the story. After all, I didn't title it Halloween Break-In for nothing. Fast forward a few hours later, and I'm in bed playing Pokemon Silver. All of a sudden, my cat started to meow and scratched at my bedroom window. I ignored her for a while since she tends to do that, but it was starting to annoy me quite a bit. Thus, I crawl out of bed and walk over to look outside. My bedroom window is on the second story, by the way, and overlooks my backyard. Well, it's in the backyard that I'm able to see some people in what look to be like costumes as they're trying to open our back kitchen door. The more I focused on them, the more it looked like the same costume people that we saw a few hours earlier while trick-or-treating. I now remember getting chills as I run over to my parents' room. Mom, Dad, wake up. Someone's trying to break into the house. After what seemed like an eternity, my dad finally wakes up. What? What do you mean, honey? There's some masked people trying to come into the house. At that moment, we hear footsteps coming from downstairs. Immediately, my dad goes into full protective mode. He grabs his gun he keeps in the drawer and tells both my mom and I to stay where we were. Don't you open the door unless I say it's me. Understand? He leaves as we fear the worst. After about 20 seconds, we hear a round fire, followed by the sounds of footsteps running out of the home. Again, we fear the worst, but my dad eventually returns along with my sister. You were right, honey. There were two masked men. One was dressed up as Ghostface, and the other was Michael Myers. Both of them had knives. So that was when my dad fires a few shots, missing them as they took off running like roadrunners. But that was pretty much the end of that, until a week later. On our front porch, we found a pumpkin basket of candy along with an envelope. We opened the envelope, and inside is simply a picture of my sister with a heart circled around her. The thing is, the picture was from the night that we met the two masked Halloween characters. See, we didn't know it, but the two had managed to sneak in a picture of my sister while she thought that they were taking a picture of me. 
We later determined that I was just a distraction. To this day, we don't know who those two were, but they never did return. A lot of my friends say that this could have been a prank from my sister's friends, but I don't think they would break into the home with knives and risk being killed. So I guess the question is, what do all of you think? Some stalkers who took it too far and got a scare of a lifetime encountering my dad? Or just some dumb joke gone horribly wrong? Either way, it was still a very creepy evening. Last year on Halloween Eve, I had one of the most frightening experiences of my life. It was roughly 11pm and I was in bed starting to drift off to sleep after a long day of work. All of a sudden, I got awoken to my cat meowing. I cursed under my breath in complete exhaustion, only to then be interrupted by what sounds like movement coming from somewhere in my house. I live with one other roommate by the way, but she was out for that week visiting her parents. She was never the kind of person to just show up without either texting, calling, or knocking at the front door. So I looked at my phone thinking that I would see a text message, but apart from a couple of Instagram notifications, nothing. Well, who in the world could be in here? My mind started thinking of all the possible explanations that I could come up with, but as the seconds turned into minutes, I began to sweat and my heart began racing. This was the point I finally snapped out of my tired state and I got up to lock my bedroom door. However, as I'm making my way towards said door, I can hear footsteps as they're slowly making their way down my hallway, along with what sounds like groaning. It was deep. It sounded like it was coming from an old man. As soon as the lock sets into place, I now begin to see my doorknob begin to violently shake. That is followed by knocking and kicking. Basically, I'm standing there on the verge of screaming with tears falling down my cheeks. Meanwhile, I can hear my cat start to hiss, and all the hairs on his back are standing straight up. Sure, I could call for help, but by the time they got here, I was sure going to be dead. Cops are on the way. You'd best be leaving. I don't even get any sort of reply. Just more kicking and doorknob jingling. It's at this moment I start praying the door won't cave in as I finally begin dialing 911 and things now start to settle. Then all of a sudden I can hear the voice of a man and in a disgruntled tone he says, Open the door already Emma, you're really starting to make me mad. Now let's take a step back. My name's not Emma and this man was clearly speaking in a drunken rage since I could hear him stumbling with his words. I have a shotgun, and if you even try getting in, you're dead. Bear in mind I had put the phone on mute when I said that I didn't want them thinking that I was crazy, not that I should have to worry about defending myself in my own house, since, again, this is my house, and there is an intruder in here. Also, I didn't even have a shotgun. I was just hoping he would fall for my bluff. This seemed to get the man to settle but not before I hear him give the door one final last good kick. And let me tell you, that final kick left a huge dent in the wood when I saw it later on. I'm actually shocked that he didn't break through all the way. Anyway, I'm behind my bed holding a hair straightener for my only sort of protection as his footsteps begin to grow distant as I hear him tossing things in another room. After what seems like an eternity of waiting, but was only about five minutes. The woman I was talking to on the phone told me police officers were just outside my house and were about to go into my home to find the man. About a minute later, I can hear the officers in my house, where they find the man as I can now hear them shouting commands at him. I heard what sounded like a taser being deployed, and then things go silent until an officer walks over to my room, knocking and indicating that I was safe to step outside. I ended up talking to the officers for roughly 20 minutes. Meanwhile, they searched around my home and checked for any possible accomplices. Nothing appeared to be stolen, and thus by my initial examination of the encounter, I concluded that I wasn't dealing with a home burglar. However, the question still remained, how did he get inside my house? The answer? A window that was left open. 
but not by me, my roommate. Yes, apparently she had forgotten to close it before she left for her vacation. Since I had no need to go into her room, I never actually bothered to go check. With all looking back, I should have done so. But hey, no one should ever have to worry about some random drunk man breaking into your home without your permission, and then proceeding to toss things everywhere, and then attempt to break your door down as you're trying to hide from them. By the way, I would later learn that the man who broke into my house was actually a local drunk who just so happened to have been in the area as he was walking about. I guess he walked over to my window and that's when he got in and proceeded to give me an everlasting nightmare. It's now a year later and I have more or less moved on from my creepy home intruder incident but I can't help but think about it when I'm lying in bed and I hear a knock or footsteps. I used to work at a Halloween store back in 2014 when I was 17 years old. Now it was just a part time job since I was trying to save up to buy myself a used car. I worked there from August to November and the first couple of weeks were actually pretty slow and all I really did was just cashier work. On the occasion I would work in the back but for the most part you would find me helping customers and checking them out at the register. Pretty basic. One late September evening the store had been pretty empty and it's just me and a couple of other co-workers. We were about 15 minutes before store closing and I was out front changing the trash can. While I had my back turned, somebody called out to me. I remember him saying something so bizarre that I was basically like, wait, what? It was something along the lines of, hey, mind if I get in on some of that action? That's hot. My best guess was he was referring to my behind since I was bending over. No, I didn't understand what you said, I tell him. He looked clearly intoxicated and I did my best to act like the good old customer service girl I was. Although deep down inside, I knew something was up with this man. Which to quickly give you a visual, he looked to be like a homeless dude. Do you want to go to my car and see all the candy I have? I already knew this guy was bad news, so I turn my back and head into the store where I tell my fellow co-workers. Just so you know, there's this really weird guy roaming around outside. Do you think we should call the police? I say. We all look out the window and he appears to be stumbling away. Still, we figured it would be a good idea to let a police officer know as he could have been a danger to himself. Rest assured, they advise us that they would have somebody come check it out. Cool. So it's official. Now it's closing time. Time to lock the front door. I head over there as my co-workers are picking up the mess down the aisles. When guess who enters and returns? Mr. Creep Guy. Except now, he has a large knife. I came to pick you up, honey. Let's go. Our fun is awaiting Hearing him say those words sent chills down my spine, but I knew this man was dangerous when he started to push displays around and went on about how he wanted to slice me up. I booked it, screaming at my friends to get into the back room. They didn't realize what was happening at this moment until they can see me being chased by this man. Bear in mind, we're all female, with the oldest being 19 years old. Thus, we each book it into the back room, where we now hit the alarm and lock the door. This was the first time I'd ever heard said alarm and that thing was so loud. Well, even with the alarm, this guy was so out of it as he began to kick and scream trying to make his way in. We now watched from the little glass window as he punched the glass with his fist, leaving behind a red imprint from his bruised knuckles and the blood. After what seemed like an eternity, we watched him exit the store and finally an officer does show up 10 minutes later, but by then, the creep is long gone. Thankfully, our security cameras did get him in the action, and after a day, they are able to find him. That was the only time something really scary took place when I was working there. I did get the occasional creep wanting to go out with me, but nothing would compare to that terrifying evening. This happened back in 2015, 
I'd gone out to a Halloween party my dorm roommate was throwing over at her parents' house. I went dressed up as a pirate. I'm female, by the way, and I was 19, if it makes any importance. Over the course of a few hours, we spent time dancing to music, carving pumpkins, having amazing food, and passing out candy to the kids in the neighborhood. Now, during my friends and I passing out candy, there would be some older kids who would compliment me. Most of it was pretty innocent, but one man in particular was a bit odd. For starters, this guy looked nothing like a kid. He was easily in his early 50s, short, slightly overweight with a thinning hairline. He wasn't even dressed up as any sort of character either, nor in costume. He just had some dirty blue overalls on. Trick or treat, the man said as he walked up to me. I put some candy in his pumpkin bucket before he whispered, You're really cute. Would you like to come back to my place? I let out a sigh in disgust as this caught the attention of my friend's dad. Is everything okay over here? Oh yeah, I was just telling your daughter she's really pretty. Oh, she's not my daughter. The pirate? No, my daughter's in the house. Well, regardless, nice to meet you, kid. Not hearing the full context, my friend's dad walks away as this man just sort of stands there looking at the candy I gave him. Bear in mind, my other friends were busy passing out candy. I can't wait to take you home with me, he said again as he leaned closer whispering into my ear. I could feel the warm garbage smell of his breath and see the yellow stains in his teeth. He now finally walked away and I was genuinely creeped out by the whole encounter. Now trust me when I say this, I honestly wish that was the only creepy moment for the evening. Just some random dude thinking he could try to get me to go out with him, presumably to do whatever he wanted to do, which let's face it, wasn't going to be good. Now unfortunately, this story is about to get worse. Fast forward to around 11pm and I was getting ready to go back to the dorm. My roommate was going to stay at her parents' house for a couple of more days. Are you sure you don't want to stay here? Nah, I'm good. I have some things I need to take care of. Oh, are you talking about that essay that's due? Yeah, that one. Well, okay. Get home safe. I'll see you back at the dorm. Thus, I'm finally on the road at around 11.30am. Here's the thing, however. For some reason, I started to get a bit of a headache. I later determined it was me drinking too much soda and having no water all day. Annoying, but I went ahead and drove over to a CVS pharmacy to pick up some medication. I also thought why not take the time to pick up some microwavable food for the next couple of days. I arrive and the cashier greets me with a friendly smile. I now head over to the back of the store to grab the food and medicine and so I now begin to walk out. At that very moment, I ended up getting a text message from my friend, so I stood at the entrance of the CVS pharmacy and responded. Here's one thing I learned, however. Never look down at your phone and become distracted during the night. Suddenly, I felt a tight grasp on my arm and another one covering my mouth. I couldn't believe how unlucky I was. Ten minutes of a drive from my friend's house at a CVS pharmacy was the man I gave candy to just a couple of hours earlier. I was at a loss of words as he began to pull me toward a beat up SUV. The only reason I got away was because an older couple saw what was happening. I also bit down so hard on his hand that I can actually still remember that I tasted blood. Nevertheless, I am able to run over to this couple as last thing I remember happening was him getting into the SUV and driving away. I remember thanking the couple profusely and they offered to drive next to me as I got back to my dorm. They did, and the SUV was never seen again. Speaking of that SUV, when I started thinking back on it when I was in my room, I started to realize something. When I left my friend's house, I noticed that same looking SUV following me to the CVS pharmacy. I only recall the SUV because something clicked in my head when I saw it. I just couldn't put two and two together due to the fact I was almost kidnapped. To this day, as far as I know, he has never been brought to justice and I've never seen him again. I think that's what makes this whole thing 
that much more scarier. Back around 2007, on Halloween night, myself and a friend of mine ended up going trick-or-treating. We were aged 14 and 15 respectively, and are both female. We lived in a very safe neighborhood in northern Texas, where the worst crime you heard about was somebody littering on the ground. So nothing too crazy. Naturally, our first choice was to go hit up the homes in our immediate area and get as much candy as we could. And let me tell you, we sure did. After about an hour, we decided to take the bus and go to the other side of town. There was one neighborhood that was very popular amongst trick-or-treaters. They had a haunted house and even gave a lot of good candy and chocolate bars. Their family was very rich. Of course, we made sure to tell our parents to pick us up over there, and surprisingly, they were actually pretty okay with it. I guess this was during a time when parents were a little bit more trusting, but I digress. The bus ride would take about 20 minutes in total, and the first few stops did have some other teenagers walk on in costume, so we didn't feel so awkward. However, even while my friend and I sat conversing, we couldn't help but notice this guy who kept staring at us. I would describe him as in his late 30s, scrawny, with long hair and ripped up shirt and jeans. He was around I'd say 5 foot 11, 150 pounds. We didn't really care since it is Halloween, but something about his eyes spelled bad intentions. It's like it was written across his face. We tried our best to ignore him and eventually we arrived at the bus stop and we began walking toward the haunted house. It's about a 10 minute walk down some pretty quiet streets. It should have been quiet if it weren't for the fact that we realized that we were being followed. Followed by the creepy man who had been staring at both my friend and I on the bus ride over. We thought maybe this was his stop too. But to test this idea we slowed down. He does the same exact thing. When we turn down a street, he does it too. It was starting to get a bit suspicious, and it didn't help that he was on his phone, appearing to be communicating with someone. Sadly, in order to get to the neighborhood that featured the haunted house, we had to walk down a street of homes that was bland and boring. Seriously, no Halloween decorations or signs of people, so it's not like we could have walked up to a group of trick-or-treaters. Anyway, we are about halfway down this block and we have noticed the stranger is now gone. We breathe a sigh of relief as we start to tell ourselves that we must be imagining things and we're being overly paranoid. This however would change when while we stood there looking for him, we saw a dirty old van slowly make its way down the street with its headlights turned off. Thinking nothing of it, we begin to walk, but then in my peripheral vision, I can see the van is keeping up pace. Finally, it's within reaching distance. I kid you not. In one quick motion, we hear a side door open and I feel a hand grab my arm. Those moments went by in slow motion. I turn my face toward the door and I can see the same creep who had been following both of us minutes prior was now trying to pull me in. His grasp must have been lacking because I am able to slip away, and that's when we take off running, screaming like our lives depended on it, which they pretty much did. We reach the corner of the street and finally we can see some adults and fellow trick-or-treaters. We scream for them to help us, and we now watch as the van slowly drives away, never to be seen again. Now the family we talked to was pretty surprised when we told them about the attempted abduction, Thus, they call the police, and when they arrive, we try to give them the best description that we could. To this very day, the identity of that creep, as well as his accomplices, remain unsolved. My story occurred three Halloweens ago, when I was sleeping over at my friend Jesse's house. I originally stayed over on the 30th, looking to go back home on Halloween afternoon. But when my parents told me that they had no plans, I just chose to stay with my friend Jesse. You see, we were busy playing video games and having ourselves a marathon of movies. Thus, what was the point of going back home and sitting with my parents on the couch and watching TV? Not exactly fun. I should add that Jesse's parents were out for that evening, 
leaving just Jesse and I alone. By the way, we're not kids. We were both 19. Anyway, fast forward to about midnight, we had already given out candy and chocolate to trick-or-treaters on Halloween evening, and the last family had shown up at about 10 p.m. Jesse's parents had called saying that they would be home in about an hour. Not a problem, as Jesse and I were in her living room, watching paranormal activity and enjoying some popcorn, just relaxing. After going through a bowl of popcorn, we decided to make ourselves another one. So I volunteered to head to the kitchen, since I wanted to grab myself a Sprite. While I'm next to the microwave checking my Instagram, I looked up for a brief moment, and I saw a shadow pass by the kitchen window. It startled me so much that I run over to Jessie and ask her if her parents were home. She told me no, and then told me that she would go look at the driveway, but there's no vehicle. Jessie starts to tell me that I was just imagining things, but I tell her I was sure I had seen some sort of movement. As if to prove a point, Jessie leads me to the kitchen, grabbing a flashlight, and then walks to the door. I'll prove you were just seeing things. Watch this. Jessie turns the flashlight on and starts to do a scan of her backyard. When she turns the light to her left, we hear footsteps scrambling. Then, just like clockwork, we reveal a man, tall and skinny, with street clothing, and long messy hair. He had this really creepy grin that sent shivers down our spines. Dude, what the heck? Jessie shouted as she quickly jumps back into the kitchen and then locks the kitchen door. I told you I wasn't seeing things. Who is he? Just as I'm calling for the cops, the man begins knocking on the kitchen door and attempts to open it. He's speaking in this really creepy tone, by the way. I won't repeat the things he said since most of it is pretty disgusting, but let me just say that it was enough to bring anyone to a halt. Jesse and I grab ourselves a pair of kitchen knives for self-defense and then tell the man that cops are already on their way. After another 10-15 to 15 seconds of this awkward staring and him trying to open another window, we lose sight of him when he jumps over the backyard fence. Sadly, the police never did find him and neither Jesse nor I have seen him again. Now, we do have some friends who think that perhaps he was just playing a prank with us, and perhaps he got dared by some friends to scare a homeowner. While there is a small possibility that that could be the case, I mean it was Halloween after all, I don't think it's such a smart idea to be doing that. I mean, he was actually pretty lucky. Imagine it being a homeowner who was armed with a gun. Things would have ended pretty badly. Actually, Jesse's dad says that had he been there, which him and his wife showed up 10 minutes after the officers got there, he would have gone outside and made sure this random creep never snuck around people's properties ever again. So that's my story. A little different, but nonetheless, still pretty creepy. I'll mention this part just very briefly because you would have to have lived under a rock to not be aware of it. In 2016, there was this sudden rise of clown sightings. It mainly consisted of bored, edgy teenagers dressing up in clown costumes, going around and scaring people. Unfortunately, there were some that took it a little too far and even got arrested for their troubling deeds. Also, many of the videos you see online regarding these supposed clown encounters are usually staged and clickbait, thus it's very hard to fully grasp how frightening this whole clown era truly was. But if by now you're wondering why I bring up these details, it's because my story takes place, you guessed it, during this time period, specifically on Halloween, as if it couldn't get any more ironic. Let me get you started. This year, it was my turn to host a yearly Halloween party my friends and I have been doing for the last three years. In fact, we still do them to this very day. Anyway, seeing as my parents would be here, we couldn't really party too hard. Not that we needed to do so anyway. Sure, we like to party, but we're very mature and don't actually cause an absolute mad show. To those of you who do, maybe take into consideration those that live around you. We don't always want to hear your horrible selection of music 
nor do we want to see you throwing your trash all over the neighborhood, only for us to have to pick it up for you. Sorry, I got a bit distracted there. Where was I? Oh, that's right, the party. My mom was helping me prepare food that entire day. Meanwhile, I was decorating both inside and outside the house. These were the Halloween decorations. Those were already up. I'm talking the party decorations. At around lunchtime, we decided to order a medium pizza as we wanted to save the food we had prepared for later. We placed the order, then sat on the couch and wait. Eventually, the app on my mom's phone said the pizza was out for delivery. Thus, I went into the garage to grab some of our extra paper plates and napkins that we keep in there. Here's when things got creepy. Because we had been so distracted with decorating and preparing for the party, we had accidentally left the garage door wide open. Wouldn't normally be a problem. After all, the neighborhood is very safe and everybody minds their own business. Sadly for me, however, that wouldn't be the case this day. As soon as I enter the garage through the kitchen door, I see him. A person, fully dressed up in a clown costume, with a red wig and red nose, and is staring right at me. Okay, well, remember, it's Halloween, and people normally dress up in costume. Perhaps this was just a case of a very, and I mean very, early trick-or-treater, though it was suspicious since they looked older than a kid. But all of that aside, the knife he was clearly holding in his hand really sent me chills, but I tried to play it cool. Nice costume, dude. Sorry, you'll have to come back a little bit later. We don't have any candy at the moment. I honestly was wishing he would have just walked away, but instead he started to let out a creepy laugh and approached me very maniacally. Okay, now things were starting to get pretty weird. Dude, I already told you, I got nothing. Can you leave? This is my garage, you can't be in here. I can now hear my mom calling me from the distance, asking if I was speaking to the pizza delivery man. If only she knew. Whatever sort of joke this guy was playing, I didn't want to be any part of it. I started to back away, only to go into a full-on sprint, when he all of a sudden starts to charge at me. What's with all the commotion? Didn't dad already tell you to be careful with that door? My mom said, as she walks into the kitchen, only for her facial expression to do a complete 180. I couldn't blame her. The dude began using the blade to make his way through the screen door before attempting to open the main door via the door handle. He was unsuccessful, and we both watched him as he walks off of our property and he heads into the nearby woods that surround our neighborhood. Well, wouldn't you know, Pizza Man arrives within seconds of us losing sight of the creepy clown. Pizza Delivery Man then asks if we knew him, to which of course we said no. We then showed him what he had done to the screen door, because you know, why not? He found it very creepy, and he said he would be willing to help with giving a description, as well as a statement to the police officers, since he had seen him. That was why he called his boss and asked him if he could stay so he could speak to the police. Dude really didn't have to, but everything was covered. Anyway, fast forward less than a week later, a man wearing a clown costume is arrested for going up to people's properties and destroying their decorations. He even managed to break into someone's house, thankfully while they were away, and completely wrecked their home. Oh, and he was caught on their security camera feed, by the way, which ultimately, with eyewitnesses, led to his capture. Also, another note. Apparently, he was taking pictures and filming this so that he could show it to his friends and followers. Honestly, what people will do for clout, it's beyond me. Why can't people just stick to their hobbies, like drawing or singing or other normal things? Even if you don't have a hobby, can't you just do something else that doesn't involve committing a crime? I don't know, people are weird sometimes. Anyway, that's my scary story. This is an older experience of mine that happened to me back in the early 1990s, when I was still in college. It's a memory that forever sticks with me every time this season arrives. Why, you might be asking? Well, you see, during that time period, 
before I moved out of state, my small town in Montana would throw a county fair during the month of October. It also acted as a pumpkin patch where families could come out to purchase themselves pumpkins. The little fair also featured rides, food, shows, haunted houses, and mazes, and everything you can imagine with the theme of Halloween. This specific year, I ended up taking my then girlfriend, now wife, Lucy, and everything was going according to plan. We went on some of the roller coaster rides over and over again, and I remember very well barfing after I got off of that one ride with the swings that go around in circles. Do you all know which one I'm talking about? Anyway, after about an hour of being at the fair, we started to get hungry, and so we got in line to get some food. I've always been a fan of fair hot dogs, even to this day, and I recall getting in line to get Lucy and I a couple of chili cheese dogs. While I was ordering, and Lucy was waiting next to the food cart, with her bright beautiful smile and golden blonde hair waving in the cool October's breeze, I saw for a brief moment as a man approached her. I didn't think much of it, since again, I'm focusing more on the order of the food, but once I've got the hot dogs in hand, I saw as the man try to grab Lucy's arm. That sent me into a fit of rage, as I recall yelling out, Don't you dare put your hands on my girlfriend. The man then turned his attention toward me, and well, let me tell you, his eyes. I can still envision them in my head. It's like they had no emotion whatsoever, like he was under the influence of some sort of spell. Kind of think of when somebody gets hypnotized in a TV show, or maybe in a movie. That's what it looked like. All of a sudden, the man started yelling at me and saying he wasn't doing anything wrong, to which I went ahead and called him out on his BS. I was seriously getting ready to square up with the dude. Not that I wanted to, but because the guy puts his hands up as if he wanted to fight me. But almost as soon as he had done that, he puts his hands back down. He then laughs before flipping me off, cussing both Lucy and I out, and then walking away and disappearing into the crowd. Lucy went up to me with tears in her eyes and said she got scared because of what the man had said to her. She told me that he mentioned that he was going to take her with him back to his house, and he was going to have his way with her, whether she liked it or not. Lucy also mentioned that she could smell alcohol on his breath, which really explained the way he was acting. Talk about downright scary and creepy. I just wish that that was the end of the creepy night, but it actually got worse. Fast forward approximately half an hour later, Lucy and I had just finished watching a little Halloween show, and ourselves and the other people who were watching are exiting the tent where the show was taking place. Suddenly, we saw this huge crowd forming toward the exit of the fair, and we even hear the sounds of police sirens. That was very weird. So, as we were curious, we went over to check out what was happening. Maybe someone got injured and the paramedics were coming to help. Well, kind of. You see, it turned out that drunk man who was giving Lucy a hard time was actually being placed in handcuffs by the police. But that's not all we saw. I could see a little bit of blood on the grass. Okay, well, what happened? Well, when I saw a neighbor of mine being attended to by some paramedics with his wife next to him, I rushed over to check up on him. His name is Frank. He was a retired marine veteran and a great friend of my dad. To keep this submission from going on too long, I'll just summarize this next part. Him and his wife were just walking about when the drunk man bumped into his wife. He started flirting with her and trying to grab her, and that's when Frank stepped in. The drunk guy suddenly flicked open a pocket knife out of his pocket and went after Frank. Frank did suffer a few minor cuts and injuries, but luckily he was able to disarm the man. Some other fairgoers came to help, by the way. Frank did make a full recovery, and as far as I do remember, the man with the knife was arrested and placed behind bars. It was a major talk of the town, and it's something I will occasionally think of today. What if that man came after me with a knife when I had encountered him? I had no prior self-defense training, 
you could have very seriously caused some serious harm. Not exactly comforting when I think of it, but luckily I've never had anything like this ever happen to me again. I'm not sure about a lot of you, but Halloween is hands down my favorite time of the year. Not so much for the costumes and the candy, but the fact that it's our one night as young adults to act like kids and just have some fun. Working a mundane Monday to Friday job can really fry your brain. That's why I always look forward to the holidays. Anyway, this was back in the mid 2000s when I was around 12 years old and work was the least of my concerns. It was a couple of weeks before Halloween and I remember I was coming back from school. Being an only child, I often walked to and from school as both my mom and dad worked long hours at their jobs. Well, as I was getting closer to my house, I couldn't help but notice someone standing in front of the front lawn, taking pictures. Yeah, you heard that right. I saw various flashes from a camera as the guy walked from one side of my home to the other. I was confused. I thought perhaps maybe he worked with the city or maybe my dad had called him over. When I finally arrived, the man told me he really admired my house and was taking pictures to show his family. Honestly, I don't remember there being anything special about our home. We live in your typical middle class neighborhood that doesn't see anyone driving any fancy cars or having fancy homes. Now you might be thinking, didn't you just mention Halloween? Perhaps that's what he was taking pictures of, the decorations. The thing is, we had no decorations of any sort. I actually remember putting up decorations that year, but it was just a few days before Halloween Eve. Anyway, he sort of just walks away and gets into an old Honda Civic and leaves. This was something I brought up during dinner time when my parents arrived. No, as far as we know, nobody was supposed to come over and check out the house my mom and dad said as they sort of just wrote it off and I soon forgot about it the next day at school. Fast forward to Halloween Eve, the night we set up the decorations. It was a Friday and after we decorated, my parents went to my school to attend a parent-teacher conference. Meanwhile, I stayed over at my friend Jasmine's house. She only lived about two minutes of a walk away. At around 7.30 p.m., Jasmine wanted to go over to my house so that we could play some Mario Party 4 on my Nintendo GameCube. We arrived, and a couple of hours later, we're really into our gaming session, eating popcorn and drinking soda. Eventually, I volunteered to head downstairs and go to the kitchen to throw everything away. I was walking down the stairs, and all is fine, until I turned the corner of the hallway. It's at this point I can just see the kitchen. Well, there crawling through my kitchen window was a masked man with a pistol. I suddenly got the chills as I remember dropping the popcorn bowl and running back to my room. What? Did you see a ghost? What's up with you? Dude, that's not it. There's a guy downstairs with a gun. Did I have Jasmine's attention? You bet I did. But now there was a problem. How do we get help if there's no phone in my room? This was also during a time when cell phones weren't exactly available to everyone, at least not to me. So in order to get police to your house, you had to call using a landline. Luckily, there is a landline inside my parents' room, and that's where we head. However, as we pass the staircase, we happen to see the shadow of the intruder passing by, heading toward the living room. How he didn't see us? To this day, I'm not too sure. But had he, I think things could have turned out pretty bad. We eventually reach my parents' room and get on the phone, but another problem soon presented itself. The call wouldn't go through. I'll explain why in a bit, and it's what makes this whole thing that much more frightening. We were running out of time, and we knew unless we could get to the front door, we were surely in for it. Now let me explain this really quickly about my parents' room. Their door was actually being replaced with a new one. Sadly, it hadn't been installed, which meant there was no way to lock ourselves in there. So, back to my room. But that didn't happen, because right before we exit my parents' room, we started to hear footsteps coming to the second story. 
Moments later, we saw him reach the top of the steps. Then he begins walking over to my room. Jasmine and I hide under the bed, putting some pillows in front of us, just hoping that he didn't come over here to check it out. He wouldn't see us, hopefully. Now, I guess we could have just run downstairs, but my room was literally right in front of the stairs. He would have seen us a mile away. Thus, we wait. And we wait. And three minutes later, the footsteps walk over to my parents' room. I am able to get a better look at him now, when he enters. The man who had shown up weeks before taking pictures of my house was now in here with a large pillowcase. I would later determine that he was robbing the house and had a bunch of our valuables in there. Nonetheless, we stayed quiet as we hear him going through my parents' drawers. At one point, he dropped some of my mom's jewelry and one of her rings falls right in front of the bed. We both started sweating. We thought that if he bent down to grab the ring, he would have seen our hiding spot. Luckily, even though he does grab it and reaches for it, he doesn't manage to see us. Another few minutes of him putting things in this pillowcase, he leaves and the footsteps go silent. We must have waited there for a solid 15 minutes, and we eventually heard my parents arrive. My dad was furious, going on about how things were a mess. This was when we finally run downstairs and explain everything that had just happened. So my mom tries to call the police. But another problem, seriously so many, the phone isn't working, just like earlier. Nothing. Thus, we go over to Jasmine's house and call them from there. When they arrived and searched the house, they saw that the phone line had been cut. That explained why none of her calls were going through. Anyway, they collected some evidence and a few weeks later we ended up getting most of our things back. The guy who had broken into her home was connected with a bunch of other break-ins in the area. So there you have it, a Halloween break-in story that really changed my outlook of being by myself at home. By the way, we ended up changing all the locks on the doors and we installed the security system as well. Some 15 years later, I now live on my own in another state and my parents sold the house just last year. It was Halloween night when I was 18 years old. We're talking about late 1980s. I was stuck taking my little brother trick-or-treating after I may have or may have not listened to my parents regarding curfew and so I got grounded. Yeah, my parents were very strict. Even though I was technically already an adult, my dad had the mentality of, you live under my roof, you abide by my rules. I shouldn't really complain since they pretty much spoiled me, but either way I want to talk about that night, mainly because it seems that even all these years later, as I listen to scary stories here on the Creepy Fox channel, there are still people out there who I just can't understand why are looking to cause trouble. Now considering I lived in a pretty nice area, you saw many kids trick or treating without their parents. What I mean is they would still be accompanied by someone, but it would usually just be an older brother or sister, but those brothers and sisters were usually no older than 13 or 14 years old. That's why I stood out like a sore thumb. So anyway, we first went to our local church that still to this day does something called Trunk or Treat. I believe you went over it in one of your previous stories, but just like that person said, Basically, there was this huge field next to the church where people would park their vehicles and they would pass out candy to trick-or-treaters. You would also see some folks barbecuing, while the church provided some other forms of entertainment, such as mazes, jump houses, and face painting too. We only stayed there for about 20 minutes, however, because my little brother, who was 9 years old at the time, he wanted to go to this one neighborhood where we had been taking him for the past few years. There was this family that went all out for Halloween. I'm talking about a fully decked out haunted house with decorations, people in costumes, spooky music, lights, you name it. They even do something similar for Christmas. Well, as we're leaving the trunk or treat, I noticed something that kind of had me going, huh? That's sort of weird. 
You see, when we had first started the trunk or treating, I noticed a man in a vampire costume who we first saw by the entrance following my brother and I. I'm not talking about a teenager or maybe even a college student. I'm talking maybe a 40-something year old man. I thought at first that he might have been a dad of one of the kids here. However, I never once saw him interacting with any kids. I did however see him talking to some girls around my age and then saw those girls walk away from him with a look of disgust. Anyway, there he was keeping a distance from my brother and I, but acting really weird. When I turned around to take a better look at him, he would then turn the other way, almost as if trying to pretend he wasn't actually keeping up with us. However, when we continued to walk another few seconds, and then I turned around again, there he was, but getting closer. This continued on for about two more times, before I started to get pretty angry with him. It was becoming apparent that he wasn't just heading in the same direction. Still, I didn't want to startle my little brother who was asking if I knew the man, and so I just told him that he was looking to scare people. The good thing was when we crossed at the intersection to walk into the neighborhood I'm speaking of, the man just stood there, albeit still staring. Now fast forward about 20 minutes later, we visited that haunted house I spoke of, and my little brother poked fun at me for getting spooked by some of the jump scares, which he handled like a champ. That kid, I tell you, he was and still is into horror movies and even scary stories which I actually got him into your channel just recently. After the haunted house, we visited a few more homes and then crossed the street again heading towards another neighborhood. At this point in the night, it's about 8.45pm and my brother is starting to get pretty tired. He told me just a few more homes and then we can go back to the car, which was parked by the church. When we got to this one home, which had characters from the Peanuts, my brother told me he wanted to get the candy himself. Up to that point, I had been going with him to the front porch of these homes to get the candy, but he wanted to show me what a big boy he was, and said he could do it on his own. This was when things would get pretty creepy. I said, sure, go for it, little man, as I stood at the end of this home's front lawn, and watched as my little brother waited in line behind some other kids. I was focused on him the whole time. However, I didn't realize that somebody was approaching me at my rear. Suddenly, I felt a hand grasp onto my arm, and I'm suddenly pulled closer to this random stranger. I freaked out, especially when I looked up and saw who it was. Remember the man in the vampire costume? Here he was, with a super creepy grin. I didn't catch your name, beautiful. You want to grab some food? Instantly, I stepped on his foot and then managed to break away from his hold while my adrenaline starts pumping through my veins. No, I'm not interested. You mind keeping your hands to yourself? I recall saying with a disgusted tone. The man apologizes as he then begins asking me if I was currently seeing anyone. I will say this, he was pretty straightforward. I remember answering, yeah, and that he's with the Marines. And this seems to get the guy to back away but not before I hear him talk smack about my imaginary boyfriend, and even me. Insert a bunch of non-PG words here. I ignored him and walked over to my little brother who was now returning back to me with a huge smile. Hey little man, is this your sister? Tell me, does she have a boyfriend? Why he was asking my little brother that question was beyond me. Nah, she doesn't. My sister can be pretty mean. That's why I think she's single. Not his exact words, but I remember it being something along those lines. The man turns to me, and obviously he's pretty angry. He starts cursing at me and telling me why I lied to him, and that he doesn't very much like liars whatsoever, and the last time he dealt with a liar, things didn't end up so well for them. We didn't stick around to hear his complaining, however. I grab my little brother's arm, and we start to briskly walk back to our vehicle. Well, guess what? The man is still keeping up and still arguing and calling me all these names. Oh, how I wish I had another opportunity to get close to him because I was seriously ready to go for a low blow. We somehow managed to get back to my vehicle, but instead of this man just leaving and calling it a night, 
he actually tries to open the car door as I'm starting it up. Let me in. I promise you won't regret it. He now starts to bang on the windows, and this was when my brother starts to cry. The last thing I remember doing was giving him a middle finger and driving away never to encounter him ever again. That was pretty much it. Until we got home. It's here my brother claimed that as we were walking back to my vehicle, he saw the man reach into his pocket and take out a little knife, only to quickly put it back into his pocket seconds later. I don't know whether or not this is true since I didn't see it with my own eyes, but even today my brother swears that that was what he saw. I truly believe that my brother has no reason to lie since he was and always is honest. Heck, he even was honest when telling this creep I didn't have a boyfriend. With all that said, it's a very creepy story that I hope you enjoyed. Why is it that when you try to be nice and do a good deed, it always ends up biting you in the rear end? That's something I really want the answer to, but I know I will never get it. What am I rambling about you might be asking? I'm rambling about two Halloweens ago when I was 16 years old and staying at home on my own. Though I was by myself that evening, I would keep myself occupied by passing out candy and working on my homework. Spoiler alert, I never did the homework and I only gave out candy for 30 minutes. I instead chose to head over to my buddy's house who was throwing a Halloween party. Nothing too fancy, but I did end up heading back to my place at around midnight. Tired and ready to enjoy the days off, I put on some pajamas and head upstairs to play some video games. This goes on for about an hour or two and eventually I go downstairs to grab a glass of water. Here's when something happens that sent chills down my spine, knocking at the front door. I ignored the knocking thinking it might just be some late night trick or treaters, but the more I listened, the more the knocking sounded desperate. I now walked over expecting to see some kids pulling some sort of prank, but when I look through the peephole, it's this man in a hoodie. Sorry, but I have no candy to pass out. Have a good evening. I know I shouldn't have responded considering I am home alone, but I was pretty tired and not thinking straight. You need to help me. I'm hurting pretty badly here. My arm, please, I need help. Okay, well, give me a minute. I'll call an ambulance for you. Just wait. No, no ambulance. I just need to go inside your house. This is important. You have to let me in. At this moment, I was considering opening the door, but something about this was very suspicious. For one, he stood there absolutely normally. I mean, he wasn't even hunched over whatsoever, nor was he appearing to be holding his arm in pain. In fact, he kept knocking at my door using both arms. Let me get this straight. If your arm is supposedly in pain, you're not going to be knocking heavily, are you? If you answered no, then yes, you're correct. I keep telling him I can call the police or an ambulance, but he keeps saying that he needed to get inside my house and call them himself. Just the fact he didn't want me calling for the police finally clicked a check mark in my head, telling me this guy wasn't telling me the truth. I told him I was calling police anyway and this sends him into a frenzy. I watched from the peephole as he backs up and then starts throwing himself at the door with all his weight. This guy was insane. I grab my cell phone and get on the line with police officers as I now run over to the windows and the doors to make sure that they're all locked and secure. When I now made my way over to the kitchen, I can see him hopping over our little side door fence from the window that I was looking at. He then runs to the back kitchen door and I watch from the little window in the door as he throws himself against it just like the front door. I got the chills and so I grab a kitchen knife preparing for this maniac to break in at any moment. He finally however gives up about 30 seconds later and I watch him hop over my backyard fence. When police arrive I give them a description but unfortunately he was never caught. He could have of course just been some guy who had too much to drink that night or he could have had other intentions but I guess I'll never know since I've never seen him again. Alone on Halloween night, what could possibly go wrong? 
I mean, all I was going to do was pass out candy and catch up on some drawing. Apparently, everything can go wrong, as I'm about to retell you. Okay, so just a quick explanation to start us off. I was 15 years old, and this was back around 2008 on Halloween night. I was home alone sitting outside on my front porch, giving out candy to the neighborhood kids. I was too old for trick-or-treating, but I still ended up dressing up as a spooky nurse. Anyway, while I passed out candy, I had some music playing and was drawing in my notebook. You see, I remember having to turn in some sketches for my art class, and I had fallen behind. Therefore, I was taking the time to do just that. That night goes by fairly smoothly, until about 9pm. I had returned from using the restroom, and some random guy, not in a costume whatsoever, was walking over to the side of my house. He looked homeless. Um, excuse me, but what in the world are you doing? Oh, sorry, I threw my frisbee into your backyard. I was just going to go and get it. Well, wait right there. I'll go grab it for you. Uh, no, d don't worry about it. Just, just keep it. Are you sure? Yeah, I don't want it anymore. That's how the conversation went. The suspicious man then walks away, and I started to feel like something was up. I mean, just by the way he spoke, it sounded as if he was on drugs. Either way, I actually went into my backyard to find this supposed frisbee, but I found none. This was when I should have called the police. After all, he might have been trying to break in. The frisbee was most likely just a cover story as I caught him red-handed, but I decided not to call the cops. A decision that I would soon later regret. Nevertheless, I stayed outside for about 30 minutes before wrapping up things for the night and returning back to my room. Fast forward to around 11 p.m. and I was now done with my drawing and I was just watching some videos on my computer. Suddenly, I got the urge to grab myself some milk and cookies, so I head downstairs into the kitchen. I grab the cookies from the cupboard and now go to pour myself some milk into a cup. At this moment, I just so happen to be standing next to a little window that overlooks our backyard. In the darkness of the barren backyard, I could see movement. The more I focused on it, the more I realized the movement wasn't from a neighborhood cat, nor a squirrel. No, instead, there was someone in a hoodie trying to open my dad's shed. I got the chills at this moment, but then explained perhaps my parents had arrived. Maybe I was seeing my dad. Either way, I run over to the front living room window to confirm. However, my parents' car isn't in the driveway. So then, who was back there? I return back to the kitchen, and that's when I get the scare of a lifetime. The suspicious frisbee man from earlier was messing with the door handle. What are you doing in my backyard? Get out of here right now! No, let me inside your house, or you'll be sorry. He then reveals a knife. I suddenly froze at that sight, but then I snap out of it as he slams his foot against the back door. He was now trying to get in. I book it up to my room where I now start to call for police. In the middle of the conversation, I heard a loud crashing sound, which I later found out was the window being shattered open. I explained to the police officers as I now went to hide in my restroom. What seemed like hours were more like five minutes, as I eventually saw two police cruisers pull up into the driveway from my small bathroom window. I'll save you all the details. But in summary, officers searched my entire home and property, but the man had gotten away. What he wanted was a mystery to me, because he didn't even take anything. So, it remained unexplained, and still does, all these years later. This happened to me in Seattle, 2017. I just left a Halloween party and was now heading to a local bar to meet up with some friends and co-workers. I was dressed up as a nurse. Now since the downtown restaurants and bars were so packed, I had to park quite a bit away from the bar. I looked and looked for a spot in the parking lot, but to no avail. So therefore, I drove down the street a bit and found a spot next to a park. It would be about a 5 minute walk to the bar, but it was fine with me. Now the problem would occur when I walked down an alleyway. Big mistake, I know, but I already been in this part of the city plenty of times, 
and I knew this was a shortcut. Besides, I saw some other people walking about, so what was the worst that could possibly happen? Well, I made another dumb mistake. I take my phone out and start to scroll through Instagram, looking at the photos my friends had just posted at the party as I'm walking. This distraction, along with me not paying proper attention to my surroundings, would allow two people to sneak up on me. In the few moments I did look up, I accidentally bumped into someone, so I apologize. I back up, only to bump into another man. I immediately felt that something sinister was about to take place. And it did. The one in front of me now demands I hand over any valuables I had on my person. I try to act as if I didn't understand them, but then I saw a knife. I knew they were serious. I was basically forced to hand over my wallet and phone, and they then take off. I was so scared that I run to the other way, where luckily of all nights, I see a police cruiser waiting outside a donut shop. I now proceeded to tell them that I was basically just mugged, and I give them a description of the two men. They told me to wait outside the donut shop and would return back with any details. The two officers were the real MVPs, because they caught those two and were able to return my wallet and phone less than 15 minutes later. So thank you for your awesome service and for ensuring I didn't lose the precious photos of my late friend that were on my phone, which I immediately made sure to back up on my computer when I got home after months of procrastinating. For context, I'm male, currently 19, but at this time I was 16 years old. I was babysitting my little brother, five at the time, as my mom was working extra hours at the hospital as a nurse. Our dad was out of the picture, which meant I was pretty much the man of the house. Taking care of my little brother whenever a babysitter or my mom wasn't available wasn't something I was used to, but I didn't mind it since my little brother and I are very close. We both love video games, and we're playing together even today. Anyway, the one thing about my little brother is that he isn't exactly a fan of scary things. He's gotten better about it now. But wow, let me tell you, just the thought of October gave him the creeps. He would start crying anytime there was a commercial on for a scary movie, and as someone who enjoys the Chucky series, I couldn't watch it while he was in the same room. I'd have to resort to watching it on my phone. By the way, who else is looking forward to the new Chucky series on USA and sci-fi? It's about time. Anyway, enough of my love for such a silly but fun franchise. There we were in the living room. We are watching some reruns of Spongebob on demand, and I'm occasionally getting up every few minutes to pass out candy to the kids that are trick-or-treating in our neighborhood, slowly but surely as the hours pass, and the time goes from 7 to 8 to 9 and all the way until 10 p.m. Things are finally settling for the evening, and I can see my little brother is falling asleep. I remember waking him up and walking him over to his room so that I could tuck him in and tell him that mom would be here in a few hours, and if he needed anything, I would be outside. You see, we have this really nice porch in the backyard that has a fire pit and I enjoy sitting out there playing on my Nintendo Switch while roasting some marshmallows and enjoying the evening. There's just something so relaxing about hearing the fire crackle that brings inner peace in oneself. So yeah, with my bag of marshmallows, I walked outside and get the little fire going as I turn on my Nintendo Switch and continue my playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I did make sure however to leave my little brother's window open just a hair as it was right next to me, so if he needed anything, he could call out to me. I would also get up every little while to check up on him until my mom got home a little past midnight. Fast forward maybe about 45 minutes of me playing there, I'm wrapped in my nice warm blanket fighting off some enemies, when out of the corner of my eye, I notice movement at the very back of my back lawn. We have a huge backyard that opens up into a set of woods, but there is a decent sized fence that prevents any wild animals from entering. That however doesn't stop the squirrels and raccoons though. Anyway, what I saw was this large figure stumbling over the fence and then falling to the ground. This was no squirrel, nor raccoon, 
and definitely wasn't a bear either. At this point, I'm getting pretty freaked out, so I grab the fire poker and start to back up toward the back glass sliding door, not keeping my eyes off of this figure. Now, I knew for a fact whoever that was had a clear view of me because they were still approaching me the entire time. Luckily, I make it in, but that's not before I get a better look at the person, now that they're within the light of the fire and the back porch light. Someone in all black attire, with matching black gloves and boots, wearing a ski mask. Immediately, my fight or flight kicks in as I think about the fact I left my little brother's window open just a hair. If this would-be home intruder saw that, he would definitely try to make his way in. So I had to act fast, and I do, because I kid you not, as I reach the window of my brother's room and start to pull it down, I saw the masked intruder immediately walk over to the window, and then he tries to open it. He was unsuccessful, and it's at this moment he begins to bang on the window, to which I tell him cops are already on the way. My brother wakes up at this point, and I remember telling him to head to my mom's room, where there's a shotgun my mom keeps for emergencies like this. We ended up waiting in the room, full of fear and adrenaline, until cops arrived. But when they got there, the man in the ski mask was nowhere to be found. To this day, I don't know whether or not he was caught, and that is something I still think of to this day, anytime we are home alone. As an update, after the situation had happened, anytime we had to stay alone, we would stay over at my grandmother's house instead. We also ended up getting a security system installed, and we just recently even adopted two amazing German Shepherds, who we love very much. This is the second year in a row that I picked up a part-time job working for a Halloween store that's in a huge shopping center. Next to the Halloween store is a Walmart, CVS Pharmacy, Best Buy, and some fast food, such as Panda Express, Taco Bell, and Chipotle. I was working on a Sunday, this was on the 11th, and it was an hour before closing. It was me, my manager, and two other co-workers, who we will call Kevin and Amanda. I was at the back of the store stocking up some of the shelves with new candy and chocolate, and this is when I got approached by a man, mid-40s, average height and build. Hey, can you show me where the restroom is? He said, as I get a strong whiff of alcohol from his breath. Sure, it's down the aisle on the left, I replied back as I continued on with my activity. Fast forward about 30 seconds. Can I help you? I said in confusion. Meanwhile, the man just stood there continuing to stare at me. What time do you get off of work, Misty? Mind if I get your number? Misty's not my real name. I'm just using it for this story, which, by the way, I had a name tag on, which was why he knew my name. I'm sorry, but I'm not really allowed to give you that information since I'm working. Oh, that's okay. I can just wait until you get off of work. The guy couldn't take a hint. I told him that I was very busy and that if he had nothing else to ask me, then he needed to go about his way. What do you know? He sticks by me the whole time beginning to ask me even more personal questions. Questions such as if I have a boyfriend, where I live, what school I attended, etc. Well, I guess you don't have to use the restroom, do you, buddy? Is this the way you go about picking up college girls? Because it's not working, I shouted back at him. The creep suddenly changed his demeanor and now begins to curse at me, telling me that I should go out with him and that no other guy is better basically a nice guy kind of person. At this moment, he now started saying things like he always got his way. I ignored these statements, clearly freaked out, and now I start to make my way back to the front of the store where more customers and my co-workers were located. The man followed me and then proceeded to grab my arm. At that point, it was all game. I slapped him right in the face and he lets go of me. However, the look in his eyes said it all. I had awoken, a beast. He tries to grab me again, but a couple of customers happen to notice what's happening and get involved. This man now starts to fight with the customers, but one of the customers, who I found out was a marine, manages to put the guy in a pretty nifty arm hold, 
giving enough time for us to call the police, who luckily are located just across the street. When the police arrived, they ended up questioning this man, who puts up quite a bit of a fight. But finally, when all was said and done, they put him in handcuffs and drive him away. Everyone in the store actually started clapping and cheering as the officers and the creep exited the store. Even the marine got recognized and everybody in the store gave him a thumbs up and a good compliment. That was it for that night. I ended up going back home, a bit shaken up and on the edge. But I was happy that I had such lovely customers and officers who came to the rescue. This takes place back in my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. It was Halloween night and myself and my best friend, who in this story we will call Jeremy, decided to go trick-or-treating in this really nice neighborhood. Just to quickly mention, we were both 14 at the time. Now normally I can understand many people by this age have given up trick-or-treating, choosing instead to pass out candy or maybe play video games or even yet, going to a party. But to us, trick-or-treating was the best. My friend Jeremy being the music buff he was, dressed up as Little Wayne, and myself being the scary fan, dressed up as Jason Voorhees. Quite the difference, that's for sure. But just wait until you hear about what happens next. Anyway, we start doing some trick-or-treating and so far everything seems to be pretty normal. Kids are walking around in their costumes, and we're jumping from house to house, collecting as many sweets as we could. I want to say it was between our 15th to 20th house that we started to notice something that was a bit strange. There was this really tall guy, dressed up as the Grim Reaper of all things, just standing behind Jeremy and I. Now, when I say tall, I'm talking about close to 7 feet maybe something more like six foot seven. They were pretty average built, but it was difficult to get an exact build estimate due to his costume covering their entire body. Here's something else that was a bit suspicious. He had no sort of pillowcase, not even a bucket to put candy or chocolate into. Regardless, we grabbed our candy and we leave. A few homes later, we turned around and this suspicious Grim Reaper character is just staring over at Jeremy and I from the sidewalk. I remember at this moment whispering to Jeremy and saying, Hey, is it just me? Or have you noticed that Grim Reaper guy following us? I was then interrupted by the homeowner who overheard the conversation as she said, Be careful with that person. If they try to put their hands on you or try to grab you, come back here. My husband will knock the living daylights out of that creep. We take this into consideration, and now we fast forward about 30 minutes. We were now at the final house for the evening, and we had just gotten our candy. While we began heading over to a bus stop where we had first arrived, I could hear Jeremy was saying something. However, it sounded muffled, sort of as if he had put his hand over his mouth. Bear in mind, I hadn't paid attention to the fact that he was just a bit behind me. So I turn around. And to my absolute shock, the person dressed up as the Grim Reaper character has a hold of Jeremy. He's covering his mouth while keeping him wrapped up, sort of like in a reverse bear hug of sorts. I knew right there and then that this person was tough because Jeremy couldn't get out of his hold. Immediately my adrenaline is pumping a hundred miles an hour and I'm trying to see if I could locate some trick-or-treaters or even some adults. No one. Therefore. I now had to take matters into my own hands to save my friend. Using the prop machete that I was holding onto, I wield it tightly and bam, I connect on this costume freak's right eye. This was enough for them to lose their grasp and my friend is able to get out of the hold. Right there and then, he lets out an agonizing scream. We pretty much booked it, dropping all of our candy to the ground and heading over to that woman's house from earlier. We knocked and we knocked, and we rang the doorbell a whole bunch of times, and finally she opens it and lets us in. Naturally, she wanted to know what the cause of our concern was, thus we go into full detail with what had just happened. Once done, 
the woman calls the police, and they head over to the area of where the possible abduction took place. Police officers then knocked on the lady's door 15 minutes later. Unfortunately, they regretted to inform us that they had gotten away. However, they were able to get some DNA evidence from some drops of blood. I'll explain the results of that in just a few moments. Anyway, the officers offered to drive us back to my house, and so we agreed. As we made the drive over, the officer explains the following. I'm not sure if you kids know this, but that neighborhood you were walking in is notorious for a lot of criminal activity. You should be very careful. Both Jeremy and I were shocked. We never thought that this nice looking neighborhood would have some sort of issue. Fast forward some nights later, we get a knock at the front door. It was the cops and they request to come in to have a word. Turns out that they had some information to share that really added to the overall creepiness. Remember the creep from Halloween night? Turned out he wasn't even from Nevada. Instead, he was from another state. Of course, due to privacy reasons, I'm not going to give you his name. But either way, he is wanted for various abductions. Oh, and he also ended up killing someone back in Arizona. To this day, he has never been caught. Hey there everyone. So that was the last story for today's episode. Thank you to all the amazing subscribers who have shared their stories over these past 4 years. I do really want to make sure I get you all a brand new Halloween stories for 2022 since this was a big collection episode for new listeners to catch up on. So if you do have a Halloween experience that you'd like to share similar to what you heard today, then please make sure to email your story with the email on screen. It's tcfnarrations at gmail.com. As my subscribers know, I tend to only cover stories that are sent in from all of you. As sourcing from Reddit and Let's Not Meet, it's going to cause you to hear nothing but repeats over and over again. And trust me, I know, that's not really fun. But yeah, I also wanted to go ahead and give a shout out to my friend Leonardo over on Instagram. He was actually the one who created today's artwork. His Instagram is at leo.amaya21. Check the description and you can see more of the artwork that he's made for the channel, as well as for others as well. Now, personally, I really love Chucky. And so that's why I wanted to feature him alongside my original character, Chamie. She's from my animation series, Aria of Emerald Hearts, which you can check it out on my channel right now. Speaking of Chucky, who else is excited for season 2 of Chucky? Last season was really good, so here's to more of our favorite killer doll. Anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for today's episode. Thank you to all the amazing channel members who help support the channel, as well as all the regular listeners and viewers who watch, listen, and share my videos with their family and friends. I'll catch you all hopefully soon with some brand new stories. But for now, take care and have yourself an amazing day.